First, let me tell you how I got involved with the library. How I even got involved in Forest Hill, because you know, after the civil rights era of the 1960s, with no discrimination, creed, race, color, or whatever, we were able to live where we could afford to live. And during that time in 1977, I was looking for a place to raise my children with a front yard, the backyard with a fence where they could play and grow up and, you know, be productive citizens. And my children grew up here. And during the time that we were creating this library, I served in the Texas House of Representatives. I was the state representative that represented Forest Hill as well as Everman and a substantial portion of Fort Worth. Uh, you know, the beginning of this library, you know, it was interesting. There's, there were some people in the community that didn't want the library. And, um, and it was, you know, it was controversial. It was something that was like talked about uh, a lot. Uh, and uh, luckily, you know, we had uh, individuals like Jerlene Harvey uh, and Charlotte Hogan Price that really said, no, we need a library. I was serving in the legislature and Ms. Jerlene Harvey was working on my staff. She was the community relations person on my staff. And my children were young then, they're adults now. And I remember my children had some homework assignments at school that required them to go to the library to do some research. Uh, we took them to the Fort Worth Public Library where they were allowed to browse the materials and use the books while they were there. But they weren't allowed to check out any books because they were citizens of Forest Hill and not citizens of the city of Fort Worth. The way it came about was that the Fort Worth Public Library used to serve the entire county. But somewhere in the late 70s, early 80s, they decided they, the city council of the city of Fort Worth, decided that they could no longer afford to provide free library services to people who did not actually live in Fort Worth. So they started charging people who lived outside of the city of Fort Worth to use their library. And that became a burden to people who could not afford to pay to use the city of Fort Worth library. So that left the city of Forest Hill with a couple of options. One was to try to pay for all of the citizens of Forest Hill to use the city of Fort Worth library. That was a losing proposition because the population of Forest Hill was growing and that would have been a never-ending stream of payments to the city of Fort Worth so that our citizens, our kids primarily, could use the city of Fort Worth Public Library. The other option was to start our own. And that's what we ultimately decided to do. Uh, back then in the early 90s when Miss Avi and Miss Ogan Price and all these women are uh, asking the council 
we need a place for our children. We need a place for our children. You know, it's Forest Hill Mall, inside that mall. Uh, they used to have a space in there. Um, my wife used to own a shop inside the mall back in 1992. And uh, they have a bunch of volunteers that are helping. Um, and they, these people put a lot of time and energy with very little money. Um, they had to raise money any way they could. They had to beg and borrow for books. They had very limited uh, 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 books and materials and all, because all those were donated to them. They didn't have the ability to buy anything. Um, they were occupied in a little room, and I think that room was even donated to them <laughs> for the library. So they had very few resources and had little to work with, but they persevered. When, they, when the idea of the library came, uh, well, when I heard about the library becoming a reality, uh, to be honest with you, when they mentioned it, I was thinking about a full functioning library. My concern back then was the fact, will this a small city have the kind of funds that is needed to really provide the resources to really make it a true uh, a functioning library. And then uh, uh, we saw the Tanessa and the dream that she had for the library. I began to get on board a little bit. And in the meantime, because uh, this building had not been constructed, we had the, the mall in Forest Hill and a building over on Holloman Street. And we had used books and so forth, and they were, we, people would donate books and so forth. Uh, in the back of my mind, I still had the vision, of what are we gonna be able to offer? In 1994, we got a new city manager. And you know, the first thing to go is your library. The city manager closed down the library, which we were housing in the Forest Hill Mall. Donated books, donated furniture, everything. This man put a lock on the door, gave all our furniture away, gave all of our books away, and the library was gone. That hurt because Ms. Harvey had worked so hard to get that library, and I could see how hurt she was. And I said, no, we're gonna bounce right up. You know, every time they knock us down, the good Lord pick us right back up. Us, we had to, we had to, walk and get signatures from the citizens of Forest Hill to get to even get us a library. Once the city shut the city library down, we had to circulate petitions. And we walked the whole city of Forest Hill getting petitions of the citizenry to put it on the ballot to vote on. When they reorganized and they were preparing to build this library. So, um, it was fun because at that point we were trying to find a place to build a library. So we were reaching out to different people and different organizations trying to find uh, a location here in Forest Hill that we could uh, have the library. We were also looking for a librarian. We were trying to get the community involved and behind us to you know, push forward to start another library since they had lost one. So it, it was really fun, and my children were small at that time. So they had a vested interest. It helped us to get them involved in community service and all. Uh, because you look back from the beginning when we were just recruiting and we didn't know where we were gonna build the library to when we finally got land and we had a place to what is it that gonna look like? And the architects started putting the renderings together so you could see the pictures and get a good idea of, oh man, we actually have a picture now. It, it's actually happening. And to get the community involved and let them know and share in that excitement of having a library here in Forest Hill for our residents to go and participate in. The citizens, the settlers in Forest Hill, wanted the crime tax. They wanted a jail. We wanted a library. And I said, I'd be damned. I'd rather see our kids in a library than in a jail. Nobody's gonna do time in Forest Hill jail. It's just a holdover facility. So we don't need to build a new jail. You can fix up the one you have, and that's what they did. Miss Harvey knew everybody because she worked for Glenn Lewis, who was a state representative. 
And the mayor of Hearst called Miss Harvey. He said, Geraldine, I think I have some land for you to build that library. And oh, when she called me, we were just jumping up and down. Oh my God, don't tell me we're gonna get some land to build a library. Now I know others have told you, and I hope this is on record of when this got started in 1999. Mrs. Harvey, uh, because you you know her passion for this project has been well documented and has been honored by the fact that this library now bears her name. Ms. Harvey came across a bill that one of my colleagues had filed um, that would allow for the uh, to create for the creation of a library district and that they could access sales tax money to fund the library if there was room under the cap. And by that I mean in Texas, uh, uh, there's an eight cent cap on sales taxes. And if any city is, they're only, at, they're only using seven and a half cents of that, then they can go up to eight cents. Ms. Harvey came to me and said, look, Representative Keel has got this bill it is bracketed just for the area that he represents. Why don't you go and see if he will let you sign on to the bill if he would expand the brackets to include the city of Forest Hill? Because we do have a half cent room. We still have some room under, our, under the cap in our sales tax. The bill was not moving. Uh, representative, it was bracketed for a small area that he represented, plus Representative Kill was a Republican. And I told, I went to him, Terry, I called him because we were colleagues and I went to Terry and I said, Terry, listen, if you will expand the brackets on that bill so that it will include the city of Forest Hill, then I will sign on to the bill as a co-author with you and I will work the Democratic side of the aisle and you work the Republican side of the aisle and we'll see if we can get this done. And, and we did. And so that's how the money came to build this building. When we created the library district, believe it or not, it only passed by 14 votes. And even when we got access to the sales tax, there had to be a referendum election. We couldn't, the law says we couldn't just pass it and levy that tax. There had to be a referendum vote and the citizens of Forest Hill had to vote to approve the use of that sales tax for that purpose. And there were some people who um, objected to having an additional half cent added on the sales tax for every purchase in this city when, there, when you purchase an, a taxable item in this city. Um, um, and Again, there was some thought then a better use of it would have been to create a crime prevention district to provide more resources for the police department. When we finally got it passed, and then we voted to get the 4th percent sales tax, by the time we were ready to build, we already had about $600,000 in our coffer. That was enough to start building. But we didn't want to be in debt. We wanted a cushion. And Ms. Harvey would always say, Charlotte, you can squeeze a dollar till you make it holler. Because I didn't want to pay off anything but our necessities until we got enough money to do what we needed to do and then a little extra, you know, in case we needed it. Because things did happen and we, had, we needed that extra money. And of course, you know, once you have land, it takes a while before you build on it. So you have to come down here and take care of it. So often the friends were down here picking up trash and helping to tend to the lot and um, just doing whatever we could to help let the people know that, look, this is our land and we have a library coming and what can you do to help? A lot of those who were members of the friends became the library district um, workers. So our, our little group kind of split at that time, but we were still working in the background while the others worked on the actual building of the building. This city manager, when we got the gift deed to this land, this man would not even allow us to put a portable building on this land to start having meetings, 
to start organizing and doing what we needed to do to build this library. And that was a slap in the face. It was very difficult. Uh, when you have people that are against you and you know that and you gotta fight them and you have people that have no idea what you're going through to try to accomplish something that will help the whole community, especially our kids, because our kids have always been our future. And to have books in their hands and computers and everything so that they can learn about their history and what has happened and where we're going or where we want to go to and where we've been, uh, there was a lot of obstacles. But through it all, God saw us through and, and this is what it has prevailed to be. It took us from then to 2008 to build our library. And the news, it was excitement. Uh, you know, it's, uh, you can hardly wait to see something, as we see, as you say in East Texas, something go up in the air. <laughs> because that's a sign that something's been done. You know, when you talk about things and so forth, and you can visualize and so forth. But when, as you stated, when you start seeing dirt moving and so forth, and a step beyond that is when you start seeing something go up in the air. I, I remember when it first opened up and uh, they opened the doors and, and we had a get together here and just to see the young people's faces. You know, that alone was, tells you that you know, this is this is great, long overdue, and uh, you know, so necessary for it to happen. Yeah, I, I, you know, I don't know if anybody was able to capture any of that on video from that day or, or through photos, but just to see those young people, uh, you know, get on the computers and you know, it's just it's incredible, amazing feeling. It has empowered the Forest Hill community. It has brought the opportunity to have access to books and reading and programs around books and reading for the Forest Hill community. Last time I looked, there were about 15,000 people here in the city of Forest Hill. And I dare say that uh, at least half of that 15,000 is kids of various ages. So this library has had a profound impact on the lives of the children of Forest Hill. It has made learning accessible to them, made books accessible to them, made programs where they get to meet people who are passionate about both learning and books, as am I, uh, to talk to them about reading and what a fantastic experience that is. I always tell the young people, being able to start reading now and start grasping those comprehension skills at a young age will prepare you to be the next member of Congress, the next senator, you know, the next CEO, you know, the next general, whatever it may happen to be. If you have the idea that this is my community, this is my home, this is my area, then this is yours, this is your library. And hopefully you would want to be a part of that and to realize that these services are here for you, to, to help you. You know, you may have a computer at home, but if you need additional research and additional tools, then they're here for you. And uh, with COVID and all, now we've had to branch to online, more online services, but they are here and they are available. And so it's important for the community to realize that we are a community and we work together and it's a place for us to come together. You know, sometimes we have two people here who are tutors and they're tutoring our students and they're tutoring other people. Uh, there was time we had ESL classes, so we were teaching Spanish. It's a tool for the community. You know, whatever is needed, it's a place that can be utilized to help the community. It's brought people from other cities here because keep in mind, 
um, when we look at the city of Everman, uh, some of their people come in to use our library. Um, when we have uh, when we have functions here, it also we've had uh, different uh, things that would bring families in as a whole. So we would gather up and have different people from different communities to come in. They would use our uh, computers. They would use our library to look up things as well as books and all those type things. It's just so many things that I can think of that, that really makes, to me, sets it apart. But the determination of the two main women who actually started this library, uh, I mean, that's second to none. That's a story within itself. The library adds so much to any community. These people were dedicated and made sure that the citizens of Forest Hill was able to achieve something that, that Miss Harvey dreamed of. And that was to put something in place that our kids could touch, see, and even begin to imagine now. The library is just a sacred place, sometimes just a place to get away from home because home is so negative once you leave school. I appreciate these Ms. Price and Ms. Uh, Harvey and them for their vision of putting this together and the trustees for working with them. The importance of this library, the truth of the matter is, we cannot be what we wanted to be if we do not have the support and the education that is necessary to take us there. It means the world to this community. You would think it has been here forever, but it, I'm what were they doing without it? And I looked in my purse, or one of my old purses, and found a, a Fort Worth Public Library card. I had to go to Fort Worth to utilize the library. My kids didn't grow up with a library here. They had to use a school library. So my granddaughter was born in 2002 when we accepted the gift deed, but it took 2008 when they poured the concrete. Every time it was a change out here, I would bring her and take a picture of her in front of it so that she would know her grandmother was a part of this library, because that's very important. Let's not forget the most important ingredient, Ms. Geraldine Harvey, who was the mother of the Forest Hill Public Library. Uh, when I walked in here a short time ago, um, I think this young lady saw me and she came out to greet me and I had to stand there and gaze at Miss Harvey's portrait there and read the inscription below it. I had some, Miss Harvey and I were very close. As I said, she worked for me uh, and I had a little bit of emotion about that because this was her passion and she worked so hard to make it happen and to see this library here bearing her name and her portrait <clears throat> I still get a little choked up I'm sorry and her portrait out in the in the in the lobby uh, I was I did experience a great deal of emotion when I walked in the wooden sign has been out there since 2008 so one of the other things that I was instrumental in doing is making an agenda item that we're gonna get a new sign, a digital sign. It costs over $40,000, but it's well worth it. Oh, it's nice. And it's something that was needed. And when you see things that need to be done, I mean, that's what the funds are for. And since we had uh, enough money in our coffer, I said, we can spare that. We can spare a new sign. So I'm very proud that we now have that new sign outside. <sighs> Miss Harvey is, most people call her Mother Harvey. I, I never did, but I, could, I can see the, the reason why they did that because you just, she just, she didn't, she just demanded respect. She was just a person that once you knew her, you just went out of your way to, 
try to assist and do the things that she had a vision for. And she was just a... She was... Stop, please. Stop. Miss Harvey reminded me a lot of my mother. I can't do this. <sighs> okay, here we go. Miss Harvey was a lot like my mother. She was determined, she had a vision, and she more or less led you to the path that you needed to to go. And I just love that about her. Even though we didn't always reach the same conclusions, we always got to the same destination. I had a, I had a, an opinion. Miss Harvey had a, an opinion, but those two opinions came together, and we reached our goals. Miss Harvey was just—it's just hard to describe her. So, I think she was the backbone of this community. I think that she, most people. You had to understand Miss Harvey, and you, you just, I, I just, I just liked her, or loved her, or however you want to put it. She was just a, a wonderful person. Now, we lost Miss Harvey in 2017. And you know, you think there are some people that's supposed to live forever. <laughs> and Miss Harvey was one of those people. But when she walked away, I wanted to walk away too, but I couldn't because I didn't know anybody who could step in and take over and keep this library going. I promised to Miss Harvey that in 20 years, I wanted to burn the note on this library. And last year, we were able to do that. This library belongs to the Forest Hill Library District, and I'm very proud of that. Thank you.